The Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots are facing each other in the Super Bowl once again, confirming that we are indeed in the dark timeline. Everything you need to know about these two teams right now. Hey everyone, I'm Corey Draper. It's been a while since I've been able to do a video in the studio, but the Super Bowl is here and I just had to come back once more to give you a TLDR rundown of both teams. Whether you're into football or not, the big game has become an unofficial holiday in America, so chances are you're attending a Super Bowl party this week and chances are you know very little about who's playing. That's what this video is for. I'll give you a quick rundown of both teams, how they got here, the star players, a little bit of history, and all the things that may be talked about during the game so you can actually be involved in the conversation this time. No more just cheering when everyone else does and only knowing the players who are married to supermodels. Let's jump in. Like I said before, the Eagles and the Patriots are the teams facing each other for the championship this time around. The Eagles have never won a Super Bowl and have only been to the game twice before. The Patriots, on the other hand, have won five Super Bowls and have appeared in 10 of them. That's around 20% of all Super Bowls. What's even crazier is that eight of those appearances have come in the last 17 years. And the quarterback, Tom Brady, and the head coach, Bill Belichick, are the ones who have made it all happen. How, you hypothetically ask? Before these two came along, the Patriots were nothing. They had no championships, and they were a pretty mediocre franchise. That all changed when Belichick became the head coach in the year 2000. In his very first NFL draft, he decided to take some ho-hum quarterback out of Michigan named Tom Brady in the sixth round. Nobody thought much about the decision then, as the Pats starting quarterback Drew Bledsoe was a pretty good player and had led New England to a few playoff games, including an appearance in the Super Bowl. But in 2001, Bledsoe got hurt in the second game of the season, and lo and behold, that dumpy-looking sixth-rounder came in and led the Pats to their very first Super Bowl victory, and then four more after that. Here we are in 2018, and it turns out that Brady and Belichick are the greatest QB and head coach of all time, and they're looking for their sixth Super Bowl ring together. It leaves everyone asking the question, when will it end? Please God, make it stop. The Eagles will be the next man up trying to take down the dynasty. Their history isn't as prestigious. The last time they were in the Super Bowl was in 2005 when they lost to the friggin' Patriots. Really the most famous stories about the Eagles involve their ravenous fans, such as the time they cheered when Cowboys receiver Michael Irvin had a career-ending injury, or the time they booed Santa Claus, or when they beat up the Redskins mascot, or when they punched a police horse, or like last week when they decided chasing a moving train was a good idea. <laughs> City of brotherly love, everyone. Anyway, let's take a look at the 2017 version of both of these teams and how they got here. Both the Eagles and the Patriots were 13-3 in the regular season and the top seed in their conferences. The Eagles represent the NFC and the Patriots represent the AFC. The Patriots got here by doing what they do and won a bunch of games. It didn't matter that they lost their top receiver to an injury before the season even started. It didn't matter that they lost their first game. It didn't even matter that they would have lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if the Bucs had a decent kicker. Nope, they took advantage of being in a weak division and strolled through the regular season twirling a cane. Aside from Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, here are some names you'll likely hear a lot during the big game. Tight end, Rob Gronkowski. Yes, he's as doofy as he looks, and yes, he's as talented and as big as he is doofy. Gronk is Brady's favorite weapon, especially in the red zone. He's been in the concussion protocol, but if he plays, he will be a big factor. Even if they lose, his presence will be felt on the dance floor in the after party. He's a big dumb animal, isn't he folks? Moving on, we have all the running backs. Why all the running backs? Because we never know which one will actually make an impact. They seem to alternate, so I'll just name them all. Deion Lewis, Rex Burkhead, James White, Mike Gillisley, and we'll even throw in Brandon Bolden in there. Then there's the impact receivers, Brandon Cooks, Chris Hogan, and Danny Amendola. Again, any or none of them could have a big day. On defense, you don't have a whole lot of household names. There's Malcolm Butler, the corner that made the epic game-winning interception in the Super Bowl against the Seahawks a few years ago. Then there's James Harrison. This guy is a future Hall of Fame linebacker who has mostly played for the Steelers his whole career, was cut in December, and then picked up by the Patriots. This guy barely did anything all year for Pittsburgh because he's at the tail end of his career. But of course he got two sacks in his first game with the Patriots. This likely will be his last game, and he definitely will want to go out winning another ring. 
There's also a couple of coaches you'll be seeing a lot during this game. First is Babyface McGee, also known as Josh McDaniels. He's the offensive coordinator, and it looks like he will be the next head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. On the other side of the ball, we have my beard bro, Matt Patricia. He's the defensive coordinator, is rarely seen without a pencil behind his ear for some reason, and will likely be the new head coach of the Detroit Lions. That's right, the Patriots are losing both their offensive and defensive coordinators. The last time that happened, they didn't win another Super Bowl for 10 years. Please, oh please. Over in Philly, the Eagles burst onto the scene this season with their star quarterback Carson Wentz. Their success was a surprise to most people because Carson and head coach Doug Peterson are only in their second season. Things just clicked this year for the Eagles and soon they established themselves as the best team in the NFL. But then disaster struck when Carson Wentz tore his ACL in week 14, just as they had clinched the NFC East. That meant the Eagles would have to go on without their star and depend on their backup QB, Nick Foles. Foles actually used to be the starter in Philly and had one really good season in 2013 when he led them to their last division title. He never really could recapture the magic though and bounced around to a couple of teams before returning to Philly as the backup this season. That clearly hasn't affected the Eagles though and Foles has actually looked pretty darn good so far. On top of that, the Eagles have had one of the best, if not the best defense in the league this year, so don't think Philly's just gonna lay down and boo people. Other than Foles and likely Carson Wentz on the sideline, here are some key players that should get some face time in the Super Bowl. Wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey. This is Alshon's first year with the team. Previously, he was with the Chicago Bears and could never quite live up to expectations people had for him. This year, though, he's been an impact player when it matters, especially in the playoffs. Tight end Zach Ertz is another big receiving threat. He was one of the best tight ends in the league this year and could score some big touchdowns on Sunday. Running back LeGarrette Blunt will be playing in his second straight Super Bowl. Last year, he was playing for the Patriots, and now this year, he'll be trying to score against them. This time, it's personal. The other main running back is Jay Ajayi. Jay had a breakout season last year with the Dolphins, but disappointed this year and was traded to the Eagles in the middle of the season. On the defensive side of things, you have defensive tackle Fletcher Cox. He was elected to the Pro Bowl this year for the third year in a row and was named second team all pro. This guy is a beast on the line and you'll likely see him in Tom Brady's face quite a bit. There's honestly a few guys I can mention here because the Eagles defense is that good. Guys like linebacker Nigel Bradham, cornerback Jalen Mills, and safety Malcolm Jenkins, who is another pro bowler, and some people call him the heart and soul of this defense. You'll likely see a healthy dose of all these guys making some key plays if Philly plays as well as they have been. Now, here are some storylines that will likely be talked about by your friends at your Super Bowl party. First, they'll probably call the Patriots cheaters. A lot. This comes from a long-standing view that was sparked by something called Spygate back in 2007. Long story short, it came out that Patriots employees had been secretly videotaping the New York Jets coaches from their own sideline in an attempt to steal signals. On top of that, there was the deflate gate controversy a couple of years ago. Yeah, I know, lots of gates. Basically, Tom Brady was accused of getting his footballs deflated on purpose so he could have better grip, which is somehow cheating. Anyway, this led to a four-game suspension for Brady last year, in spite of there being no concrete evidence. People are also convinced that referees are in favor of the Patriots in big games. The most recent example being the fact that New England was only called for one penalty during the AFC Championship game, and that's pretty rare. There also was this shot of a referee congratulating Brady, so of course the internet took that and ran with it. And if you're watching with Patriots fans, they likely will be going off about how the NFL is against them and wants them to lose. Largely because of how unfairly they felt they were treated during both Spygate and Deflategate. Another thing your friends may discuss is an ESPN report that came out a few weeks ago which said that Bill Belichick was so upset that ownership forced him to trade backup QB Jimmy Garoppolo that he wants to leave and this year could be his last year. I'll link to it below, but I feel like it's pretty far-fetched but oh, is it so fun to dream. As for the Eagles, people likely will be talking about the last time they were in the Super Bowl. They may talk about how the quarterback, Donovan McNabb, was throwing up in the huddle during the game, or how Andy Reid, their former coach, still can't figure out how to win in the postseason. He's the head coach of the Chiefs now, by the way, who were upset at home by the Tennessee Titans in the playoffs. And finally, in case you didn't already know, Justin Timberlake will be performing the halftime show this year. Why is that a big deal? 
because the last time he did this, the infamous wardrobe malfunction happened, and we were then punished over the next few years with geriatric musical acts who were way past their prime. Let's keep that suit and tie on this year, JT. That about wraps it up. Hopefully now you don't have to just watch for the commercials. Let's be honest, they disappoint every year anyway. Is there something I missed? Let us know in the comments below. Also, who do you have winning the game? Remember to subscribe and hit me up on Twitter too. See you next time.